Well, hi folks. We're going to start with a uh, video uh, lecture is what I like to call it. And uh, this is kind of the way I do it. I use a little camera called a flip camera. And then I uh, uh, record uh, these things that I draw from your uh, materials in your class. And then I provide them to you as part of your discussion in order to give you some added uh, value as it were uh, in addition to your book and so forth. So before we you know dig into the material I want to clarify a little bit about who I am. I'm a, a adjunct professor at SNHU. I've also taught at a number of other schools including uh, community colleges and state universities uh, and then I also have taught for some other private colleges. Um, I've actually done the adjunct teaching for a long, long time, and then for a period of time, for about 10 years, I was a full-time uh, professor and actually ended up being a full professor, which is pretty much as far as you could go as uh, far as um, uh, being, uh, you know, moved up through the ranks uh, from uh, basically um, one type of uh, like a uh, instructor to associate professor, professor, uh, and so forth, up to full professor. So, um, just to let you know a little bit about myself, I started out in juvenile probation many years ago. I uh, moved from there over into the public defender office when I finished law school, uh, and then I finally ended up being a juvenile referee uh, in Grant County, Indiana, uh, which is my hometown. And in that position, uh, I'd also be required from time to time to fill in for elected judges who were sick or who had taken a vacation. So I've had some experience with this, but I've never been elected a judge. But I want to let you know a little bit about my background. I, I do know uh, some things about this as far as from experience. Now, one of the things in your first uh, discussion board is that there is a, a question about the appointment of judges uh, in um, federal court as opposed to the election ju of judges in the state court. And there's a lot of uh, variability of how judges come to be in office in the state court. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, suffice it to say, stand for election and popular elections. Uh, just like mayors and other people, uh, like the governor and people like that. Uh, and it's thought by some that this is not a very good idea because the judges uh, tend to kind of uh, try to placate the voters. Uh, and sometimes they may not do their best job as far as weighing the evidence on its merits because in the back of their mind there's that little voice that keeps saying, well, if you want to get reelected, you've got to make the voters happy. So that can be a major problem. Now federal judges are appointed because of the U.S. Constitution. It clearly says in the U.S. Constitution that uh, all federal judges at every level are to be uh, appointed by the president and then confirmed by Congress. Uh, and generally that means the Senate. Uh, and so uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, history when it comes to these appointments and people that have sat in office for many many years. Um, some people might say until uh, they're obsolete, ineffective, uh, you know what if they have a memory loss or uh, um, Alzheimer's or something like that but yet they're still a federal judge uh, so this can be uh, very unsettling for some people. I wanted to bring to your attention that I found online an interesting uh, little website uh, that's put on by the uh, United States courts and it's a comparison of all the judges uh, that were appointed by the different presidents. So I think that is uh, by itself is pretty interesting. For example, you know Franklin Roosevelt, he was president from 1933 to 1945, so in other words, throughout the Depression and then uh, most of World War II. He died just before the end of World War II. He appointed nine Supreme Court justices, which is basically all of the court, swept everybody off the court, put new people on. 
uh, regional courts of appeals. Uh, he uh, appointed 52 judges, and then district courts he appointed 136. So this is uh, quite a large number, but you've got to keep in mind that he was in office for a long time, uh, and so um, you know that's 12 years that he was in office. Uh, so uh, others like Truman, for example, only appointed four Supreme Court justices, uh, 27. Um, regional courts of appeals and 102 district courts and the thing about him is that he was only in office for eight years so uh, you know these are uh, some you know sharp differences Eisenhower on the other hand was uh, in office for eight years as two uh, also and uh, he had appointed five Supreme Court justices 45 regional courts of appeals and 127 district courts. Now, uh, beginning with Reagan, there was another layer of uh, courts of appeals called the USC AFC uh, and um, also the USCFC. So this is another layer of courts of appeals uh, because, you know, we're getting uh, a lot of cases in the courts and they're getting punched up. So uh, that's very interesting as to far as the it really has added to the load uh, of, of judges that have to be appointed. So Reagan only appointed three Supreme Court justices, but he appointed 78 appellate judges, five USCAFC, and uh, 18 of the USCFC. Uh, and then in the district courts, he actually appointed 290, which is a huge number. Uh, Bush, on the other hand, the first Bush, uh, George H.W. Bush, only appointed two Supreme Court justices, 37 Court of Appeals, five of the USCAFC, and uh, only two of the USCFC, and then 148 District Court judges. So it's gone along like that. Uh, Clinton was in office for eight years. Bush was only in office for four, the first Bush. And uh, so there's quite a difference. Although Clinton only appointed two U.S. Supreme Court justices, uh, he almost basically doubles uh, Bush in some areas, like with the Court of Appeals and uh, District Courts. Um, the second Bush, which is uh, George W. Bush, um, appointed pretty much a similar number because he was in office for uh, eight years but uh, he did not appoint nearly as many district court judges as Clinton did. Uh, Obama uh, was pretty much similar to Bush in terms of the number of uh, judges that he appointed. So that's something to keep in mind is that how important it is is that who is the president and who is going to appoint the judges. So uh, this uh, little website is called Judgeships Appointments by the President. I'm going to share that with you. Um, and then I'm going to also move on to like state courts and share with you, you know that uh, some of you already mentioned this, there's this Missouri plan uh, and uh, I want to share uh, some comments with you on the Missouri plan. There's things called a Missouri plan and then there's also uh, a thing called the modified Missouri plan and that's kind of what my state which is Indiana kind of uses uh, and other people have uh, drawn bits and pieces other states have drawn uh, uh, bits and pieces from the Missouri plan and created their own plan and I mentioned that in one of my posts Indiana does have elected judges Ohio, on the other hand, uh, has elected judges, but they have to be nonpartisan. They cannot declare uh, a party like Democrat or Republican. Uh, but the word gets around, you know, that the, you can look at their voting record. Well, they've always voted Democrat or they've always voted Republican. So you can kind of still figure that out about where their support comes from. So the Missouri plan that I mentioned earlier I want to share with you is a nonpartisan court plan, uh, also known as a merit plan for selection of judges. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, 
some other states have used part of this, or some of them have adopt, adopted it in whole. And uh, a nonpartisan commission in Missouri reviews candidates for vacancies, and then the commission sends the governor a list of candidates that are considered best qualified. So the governor then has 60 days to select one candidate from this list of names. So maybe they send 10 names uh, that they consider to be qualified. If a judge finds one on there, that that's the guy that, or I mean, the uh, governor finds there that he wants to make the next judge, then uh, they put that through. Um, and the governor, uh, you know, gets to pick. Generally, I would expect the governor does make a selection. Uh, and then after the completion of one year's service, the judge must stand for a retention election. And we kind of have that at the appellate level in Indiana, which is, uh, do you want to keep this judge, yes or no, is all that the ballot says. So if you uh, vote against uh, retention, the judge is removed, and then they go through this whole commission process again and put another judge in there. Uh, and then, um, you know, when they uh, finally get uh, a majority that votes in favor of retention, then the judge will serve a full term, which is generally from four to, to six years. Well, hey, I'm going to be getting into more of this as we go along. I hope this has been a little bit helpful. Uh, main areas of focus, look at the federal uh, appointments plan and then look at the Missouri plan and then it would be good if you could do a little bit of investigation in your state uh, and find out how you elect judges in your state and then share that in your discussion board. I think that would make it really interesting. How many of you uh, use the Missouri plan in your state? Let us know. So hey that's it for today. Thank you very much and I'll be back in touch.